Let us now pray the Oratio Imperata for protection against COVID-19. Please all kneel. Merciful and compassionate Father, we come to you in our need to seek your protection against the COVID-19 that has disturbed and claimed many lives. We ask you now to look upon us with love and by your healing hand, Dispel the fear of sickness and death, restore our hope, and strengthen our faith. We pray that you guide the people tasked to find cures for this disease and to stem its transmission. We thank you for the vaccines developed made possible by your guiding hands. Bless our efforts to use these vaccines to end the pandemic in our country. We pray for our health workers that they may minister to the sick with competence and compassion. Grant them health in mind and body, strength in their commitment, protection from the disease. We pray for those afflicted. May they be restored to health. Protect those who care for them. Grant eternal rest to those who have died. Give us the grace in these trying times to work for the good of all and to help those in need. May our concern and compassion for each other see us through this crisis and lead us to conversion and holiness. Grant all this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. We fly to your protection, O Holy Mother of God. Do not despise our petition in our necessities, but deliver us always from all dangers, O glorious and blessed Virgin. Amen. Amen. Our Lady, health of the sick, pray for us. Saint Joseph, pray for us. Saint Raphael the Archangel, pray for us. San Roque, pray for us. San Lorenzo Ruiz, pray for us. San Pedro Calungsod, pray for us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. My dear brothers and sisters, today we celebrate the memorial of St. Clare of Assisi. Let us pray in this Mass that like St. Clare, we may also live in poverty and so merit the kingdom of heaven. Let us now call to mind our sins and beg the forgiveness by which we are renewed and saved. Lord Jesus, you show us the way to the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you give us the consolation of the truth. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are the Good Shepherd, leading us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who in your mercy led St. Clare to a love of poverty, grant through her intercession that following Christ in poverty of spirit, we may merit to contemplate you one day in the heavenly kingdom. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, 
who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Deuteronomy. Moses went up from the plains of Moab to Mount Nebo, the headland of Pisgah, which faces Jericho. And the Lord showed him all the land, Gilead and as far as Dan, all Naphtali, all the land of Judah, as far as the Western Sea, the Negev, the circuit of the Jordan, with the lowlands at Jericho, city of Palms, and as far as Zoar. The Lord then said to him, This is the land which I swore to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, that I would give to their descendants. I have let you feast your eyes upon it, but you shall not cross over. So there in the land of Moab, Moses, the servant of the Lord, died as the Lord has said, and he was buried in the ravine opposite Beth Peor in the land of Moab. But to this day, no one knows the place of his burial. Moses was 120 years old when he died, yet his eyes were undimmed and his vigor unabated. For 30 days, the children of Israel wept for Moses in the plains of Moab till they had completed the period of grief and mourning for Moses. Now Joshua, son of Nun, was filled with the spirit of wisdom, since Moses had laid his hands upon him. And so the children of Israel gave him their obedience, thus carrying out the Lord's command to Moses. Since then, no prophet has arisen in Israel like Moses, whom the Lord knew face to face. He had no equal in all the signs and wonders. The Lord sent him to perform the land of Egypt against Pharaoh and all his servants and against all his land. And for the might and the terrifying power that Moses exhibited in the sight of all Israel. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Blessed be God who filled my soul with fire. Blessed be God who filled my soul with fire. Shout joyfully to God, all the earth. Sing praise to the glory of his name. Proclaim his glorious praise. Say to God, how tremendous are your deeds. Blessed be God who filled my soul with fire. Come and see the works of God, his tremendous deeds among the children of Adam. Blessed are God, you peoples, loudly sound his praise. Blessed be God who filled my soul with fire. Hear now, all you who feared God, while I declare what he has done for me. When I appealed to him in words, Praise was on the tip of my tongue. Blessed be God who filled my soul with fire. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, If your brother sins against you, 
Go and tell him his fault between you and him alone. If he listens to you, you have won over your brother. If he does not listen, take one or two others along with you so that every fact may be established on the testimony of two or three witnesses. If he refuses to listen to them, tell the church. If he refuses to listen even to the church, then treat him as you would a Gentile or a tax collector. Amen, I say to you, Whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatever you lose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Again, amen, I say to you, if two of you agree on earth about anything for which they are to pray, it shall be granted to them by my heavenly Father. For where two or three are gathered together in my name, there am I in the midst of them. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. My dear brothers and sisters, St. Clair, whose feast we celebrate today, was born in Assisi in the 13th century, and she came from a rich family. But she was drawn to the preaching of St. Francis of Assisi, who later became his spiritual guide and lifelong friend. On Palm Sunday night of 1212, Claire escaped from his father's house and dedicated her whole life to God. She lived in radical poverty. She and the other women who followed her walked barefoot. They slept on the floor, they did not eat meat, and they observed almost complete silence. A living out of true poverty. But my dear brothers and sisters, St. Clair teaches us what true poverty is all about. Poverty is not just to be without any material possession. Ganyan kasi madalas ang pag-unawa natin sa pagiging dukha. Ang isang dukha ay walang kayamanan Walang ari-arian, walang pera. But one could have no possessions, but still be not poor. Maari yon. Wala kang ang material na kayamanan, wala kang pera at ari-arian, pero hindi ka parin tunay na dukha. What makes one truly poor? It is when we are empty of ourselves that we are truly poor. Kapag punong-puno tayo ng ating sarili, hindi tayo dukha. Kapag punong-puno tayo ng sarili, kahit na wala tayong pera o kayamanan sa mundong ito, Kung punong-puno tayo sa, ng ating sarili at tayo'y mayabang, nagmamalaki, itinataas ang ating sarili, hindi tayo tunay na dukha. St. Clair was able to live radical poverty because she was first empty of herself. And because of her emptiness of herself, 
She lived in poverty because she discovered God as her true wealth. Our readings today, my dear brothers and sisters, also talk of poverty as being empty of oneself. Our first reading is the conclusion of the story of Moses. God showed Moses the land that he promised to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob. God shows Moses the promised land which every Israelite dreams of entering. But God simply showed the land to Moses and then told Moses, you will not be able to enter that land. You will not be able to step foot on the promised land. Ano kaya ang naramdaman ni Moises? He must have been frustrated. He must have felt disappointed. He was the one who worked hard for the liberation of Israel from slavery in Egypt. He was the one who journeyed with the Israelites for 40 long years in the desert. And now, they were very close to the promised land. And God tells him, no, you will not enter the promised land. It will be Joshua, your successor, who will accompany the people of God to the promised land. But here, we see the poverty of Moses. Pwedeng-pwedeng sabihin ni Moises, ang daya naman. Ako ang naghirap. Ako ang gumabay. Ako ang namuno sa mga taong ito. Tapos ngayong malapit na tayo doon sa ating pupuntahan, hindi ako kasama. But Moses knew that nobody is indispensable. He could easily be replaced. As long as he has done what God wants him to do, then that is all that matters. Kung ang role ni Moises ay yung samahan lamang sila hanggang doon sa malapit na sila sa ipinangakong lupa ng Panginoon, tuto pa rin yun ni Moises. Kung sinabi ni Moises sa Panginoon, hindi, dapat kasama ako. Punong-puno si Moises ng sarili. Nagmamayabang. But the poverty of Moses is shown in his capacity to accept the will of God. To accept that it will not be he, but another person who will enter the promised land with the people of God. Pwedeng-pwede siyang palitan kahit anong oras. Kaya yung mga taong ang akala sa sarili, hindi sila mapapalitan, mayabang, punong-puno ng sarili. In our gospel today, Jesus speaks of fraternal correction. But did you not notice something odd in what Jesus said? Jesus said, if your brother sins against you, Go and tell him his fault between you and him alone. Kung may kasalan ng ginawa sa iyo ang yung kapatid, puntahan mo siya at kausapin mo. Don't you find that odd? Usually, it should be the one who has done something wrong who should go to you, who should take the initiative, who should ask your forgiveness. Siya ang nagkasala, siya ang unang lumapit. Bakit ako ang unang lalapit sa kanya? But here, Jesus points out to us another form of poverty. Poverty that is being empty of oneself. Poverty that is without arrogance, without pride. Kung punong-puno tayo ng pride, sasabihin natin, hindi ako lalapit. 
Siya ang lumapit at humingi ng tawad sa akin para magkasundo kami. But the poverty of Jesus is shown by our humility to be the one to take the initiative because there can only be true peace if we are poor, if we are empty of ourselves, if we are not proud. My dear brothers and sisters, like St. Clair, let us also be empty of ourselves. Wag puro sarili at wag punong-puno ng sarili. Let us be poor. Let us live poor so that we can be truly rich with God. Jesus tells us today, if two of you agree to ask something, it will be granted to you by my Father in heaven. So we pray together and say, Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. That the members of the church may be drawn close together, living in peace and harmony. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That leaders of nations may respect the rights of every person and avoid repression and atrocities, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. That we may have the courage to speak the truth with love and accept criticisms graciously, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the sick, the aged, and the housebound may see God's comfort and consolation in the compassion of those who care for them. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the dead may be cleansed and prepared for eternal unity with Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray in silence for our own petitions. We remember the people who requested our prayers and the intentions offered in this Holy Mass. Heavenly Father, with your Son in our midst, we ask you to help us believe in the goodness of each person and be patient with one another as you have been good to us. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may become acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of His name, for our good and the good of all His holy Church. May we receive, O Lord, we pray, the effects of this offering dedicated to you, so that we may be cleansed from old earthly ways, and through the example of Blessed Clare, be renewed by growth in heavenly life through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, 
For in the saints who consecrated themselves to Christ for the sake of the kingdom of heaven, it is right to celebrate the wonders of your providence by which you call human nature back to its original holiness and bring it to experience on this earth the gifts you promise in the new world to come. And so with all the angels and saints, we praise you as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and Jose, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, with Saint Clare, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray to the Father as Jesus taught us. Our, Our Father, Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, 
Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold Jesus, the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Act of Spiritual Communion My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. May the holy reception of the body and blood of your only begotten Son, O Lord, turn away from the cares of this fleeting world, so that, following the example of Blessed Clare, we may grow in sincere love for you on earth and rejoice to behold you for eternity in heaven, through Christ our Lord. Amen. As we celebrate today the Feast of St. Clare of Assisi, our healing rosary tonight will be led by the daughters of St. Clare, the poor Clares of Cabuyao, Laguna. And so let us gather tonight at 9 o'clock as a family and as a, as a community to pray to Our Lady and to ask for her intercession. Let us join the Poor Clare Sisters in seeking the maternal intercession of the Blessed Virgin Mary. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. 
Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Thanks be to God.